Hey, Ian. Uh, oh, hey. we're not talking about Washington, D. We are talking about the draft. Hey, uh, so as you've known from working with me for 10 years, I don't care much about the draft. I care about the draft three years later when that player is doing anything. But I remember you like hit me up and like, hey, man, Caps just drafted a guy named Evgeny Kuznetsov. I'm like, yeah, let me know when he shows up in Washington. And that was like, you know, several years later. Uh, was the draft interesting? Uh, mm, uh, that's a push. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 you, you would think that because everybody was like doing it digitally, it would have gone way faster than normal, and it just dragged on. I think the second round took like three hours. It just made no sense at all. Uh, but yeah, the the Capitals drafted in the first round. They traded up, which we can discuss that later, uh, to draft uh, Hendrix Lapierre out of the QMJHL, which is basically the French Canadian Junior League. And this kid uh, was a top 10 talent. Uh, he's a center. But he fell way down the draft board because he suffered what people thought were to be three concussions last year, the third of which uh, kept him completely out of the 2019-20 season beyond, like, I think it was November. Um, and he was really struggling with it. And he ended up going to uh, a doctor in Boston. And they found out that it was actually a vertebrae issue. Uh, and that he only had one concussion. Um, and he's already playing this year and he looks great. Uh, so it could have been one of those amazing steals that the Capitals have done late in the draft. Uh, you know, as you said, Kuznetsov is one. I would even say Tom Wilson uh, is kind of another. You know, they compared him to Milan Lucic, and that's kind of an insult to Tom now. Uh, <laughs> it so, certainly is, yeah. Uh, my, my favorite part about them drafting Tom Wilson was that his name was Thomas Wilson. Um, I wish he would have been wearing, like, glasses and I don't know. Anyways, is that but, like uh, what was like on like the Chiron at the bottom of the screen, or is that just what Pierre yeah. called him? That, no, that's what his name was in the draft. It was has, Thomas Wilson. No one has called him Thomas since. Nope. <laughs> so uh, Hendrix Lapierre was yeah. like the big dropper, and I guess everyone was like, "Well, we're not going to sign him because we're we're thinking he's hurt." And I guess the Caps were like, "No, no, we've got the diamond in the rough here. Everyone thinks he's banged up and and not able to do." It. And I guess they stole him from. I guess. What it was like the Flyers. The Flyers. That was what they got by trading up. Yeah, that was from Chris Cirillo, who is amazing. Really good at this. Amazing yeah. knowledge. Yeah, amazing knowledgeable database of prospects. Which he's, I don't know where he gets it from. He's as good at prospects as he is bad at Pokemon Go. <laughs> yes, uh, but he was like, "Oh man, the Flyers were trying to draft a forward," and I was like, "What?" Uh, but but he ended up being right, and so. I think the positive there was is that not only do they get a good talent, um, they also keep him from playing for the Flyers, who looks like they're going to be a power for the next few years. And so, yeah, I, you know, so that was cool. He he seems, you know, usually when the Caps draft anyone or they sign a new guy, sorry, Justin Schultz, you know, they're not they're not very impressive speaking wise. Uh, they're not they're they're not going to be very revealing. But this kid is a talker. He's like in the Nate Schmidt vein a little bit and very articulate, very smart, very enthusiastic. Um, if he makes it, I think people are going to fall in love with him because he's only going to get more smart and uh, more fun, I think. So, you know, so that was cool. Um, so my concern uh, basically was is that the Caps came into this draft. If we're going by the athletic rankings, as having the worst farm team in the entire NHL. That was and Corey Bronman's ranking. Yeah. And so them aggressively trading more picks, uh, it's questionable because they're already kind of struggling with their depth in the minor leagues. Um, so that was the one thing that, you know, you could kind of, you know, I'm less worried about the player's talent. I think I think they might have gotten a good one there. I'm just more worried about the 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 dearth of of guys in the minors now. That's um, a fancy word you just used there. Yeah, five dollar word for me. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the important part. I, it, I said it correctly. <laughs> it did for sure. No, that you're. It, it is like one of those things. Like the Capitals have been competitive, I guess, for like 11, 12 years now. Won one cup and and you know a President's Trophy and been a damn good team, but at the cost of totally depleting the farm. Uh, and I, they need to find some way to sort of restock. Like we all sort of accept that, like the cup window as in like the time where like people would say the, the caps are cup favorites 
is several years in the past and and you could probably argue that they won the cup one year after their window mm. closed as being like favorites uh um, yeah. but the you know they, they're still going to be competitive and and be a, uh, like a scary team that could get lucky so um it's a weird like do you retool you know what it reminds me of is jonathan taves being so cranky about what's happened with the blackhawks like the blackhawks like started like selling parts and like all of a sudden they're saying they're in a rebuild and he's like uh what no one told me that we we're in a rebuild i'm here trying to win a cup and everyone's like yeah okay robot taves like no one cares about your feelings <laughs> as if you have any but like the caps are in that situation except everyone sort of knows that like they're going to try and stay interesting and good as long as possible yeah i think one thing that's going to betray them eventually is that ovechkin is going to start falling off i think a lot of guys are just signing with the caps because of Ovi. You know what I mean? Like, oh man, I get to play with one of the greatest players ever, chasing Gretzky. I mean, you don't really have to do a big sell job to get, you know, a certain ho- future Hall of Fame goaltender to sign on the dotted line when you have Baxter and Ovi, you know? So, I, but I think that's going to wear off eventually. And they're just going to be left with, you know, just, uh, I, I worry. I, I, I do, I do think that's becoming worrisome. What, so, what, what do you think was the, tr- the, what was the commonality of things that Schultz and Lundqvist said? Which, by the way, we'll talk about both more in, in more detail oh. a bit. But what was the one thing they said about playing with, with Ovechkin rather than against Ovechkin? <laughs> they don't have to stop his one-timers anymore. So and that was it. awesome. That It's really funny that that, that kind of comes up naturally, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so, so. I, whatever. They, they drafted some more guys. They drafted the, the Swede. You know, it was a uh, it was a draft. I don't know. Everyone's sort of talking yeah. about like the future of the NHL as if there is one, and I don't think <laughs> anyone actually knows that for sure. So let's do more of that and talk about free agency. You want to get into it? Let's do it. All right. So uh, I guess I want to talk about uh, the stuff that happened before we entered re- uh, free agency, which I was the announcement that Michael Kempney had was an Achilles problem. Yeah, he tore his Achilles, and he's out for like what six to eight months. I think they said. Yeah. It, was, it was a mm-hmm. long time, which sort of probably pressed the issue of like the Caps were the Caps always sort of said they wanted to re-sign Brendan Dillon, but they definitely did that for sure after. Um, well, once they knew what was up with Kempney, I think those things got announced on like consecutive days or maybe the same day. And then when they entered free agency, they picked up Trevor Van Riemsdyk, who's a good sort of like 7D and uh, Justin Schultz, not Jeff Schultz, uh, most recently of the Penguins to sort of fill out the right-handed side. Um, The Justin Schultz one's interesting, right? So two years at 4 million, is that right? Yeah. The, that's a lot of money for Schultz. And like that, that threw me off a little bit. Um, Yeah. Like his numbers are trash, like dashboard. Yeah. And, and I, he's not. um, So my, my take on this is that he's, he wasn't signed because he's like a, He's got okay shot suppression and obviously his numbers are a little depressed because he played with Jack Johnson last season. But yeah. the thing that I keep, I keep thinking that the cap signed him, Brian McClellan signed him as sort of like a, one of his like laser focus deals, which we've seen him do before to solve a sort of a, a handful of problems. Like, you know, like a, that sort of, he has traits in a constellation that match those problems like right-handed, right? The caps were super uh, like, like left heavy last season. Uh, and that led to a lot of problems for like Todd Reardon's pairs. Um, second, uh, Schultz is like your like breakout first pass guy. Like he is not to like invoke Nate Schmidt, but like that's one of the things that Nate Schmidt does really well. Justin Schultz doesn't get that involved in the offense. He's basically like an like an anti offense guy, which will be a little bit of an issue with uh, Laviolette, who likes to get the D involved. But like, um, I think he'll help with transition play, which was another one of the big Caps problems last season. So during during the interviews, everybody, uh, McClellan, Schultz, both of them said that the reason why he signed and was signed was because he was going to jump in the play. Like this, this is a guy that's going to get involved in the offense, and he's such a boring player. Um, I would say that I barely noticed him during Caps Penguins games. Like you notice Orpik, you notice Niskanen when they sign them. Schultz, I'm just, I just do not understand the number versus his output. Yeah. And it suggests that, like you said, is like they overpaid for Orpic. Um, they're, they're at the top of it. 
for Niskanen, uh, you know, uh, before they won that cup. And, you know, they signed them about two years prior, three years prior. Um, and it worked out. Um, but, you know, I don't know how to feel about it. it. It was definitely too much money, or at least it was more money than you would sort of like ascribe to that player's like value in a vacuum. And it may just be that the Caps knew that they needed exactly what this player offered. And yeah, he may not be like a, a strong like analytics player. And look, this is me saying this, right? But he may be good at the things that the Caps are bad at. So they found sufficient value in the player to make up for the overage and the actual like practical cost. We'll see. I also think like two years at a certain dollar amount might as well be saying like a billion years or like Narnia years. It's fake time. It's untimed because everyone knows that players are going to be exposed in the Seattle draft. No one knows what's going to happen um, oh, yeah. two months from That's now, three point. months from now, or next season, we could see, well, we can get more into like what the heck's going on with 2021 uh, in later in, in the, the pod. Um, but I'm, so, I'm not too upset about it. So one, one thing about the D that I didn't understand was that, um, and this is kind of a Brian McClellan thing is a lot of times the capitals will have certain players that appear to be ready a hundred percent. And I, I think one of those players would be Martin Faravari. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he has NHL speed. I think I think he he has a little bit more dangling ability and stick handling ability uh, than people expect. I think he's 21, 22. Um, and then he's a great first pass defenseman. I look at Faravari. I look at Schultz, and I'm like, you know, I, I think Faravari is a lefty. Uh, I don't have all the defensemen memorized their handedness like. Me Most either. other Caps fans seemingly do. Chris uh, does. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, he does. I don't, I don't know how you memorize it. I just, I just don't care enough. But, um, but I just look at Schultz and I look at Faravari and I'm just like, okay, so this is going to force Faravari down to Hershey probably. Um, because you, you also have Jonas Siegenthaler, who they qualified and are taking, uh, you know, so they'll, they'll either resign him or, or, or get a, uh, or go to, what is it, arbitration on him. So, I, you know, and then it also kind of squeezes Jonas out a little bit, potentially. Mm-hmm. So I don't, you know, was their defense that bad last year? I thought it was more a system forward than D thing. Um, you know, and maybe like John Carlson was not as good as people thought defensively. But I don't know. I, I, I didn't understand them going so hard D, you know. And I, I can. I mean, I, I, knowing how much stuff sucked during the the Islander series and seeing how much the team got sort of like hemmed in and then like just got destroyed by any kind of neutral zone pressure at all. That was because they like you could overload on one side of the ice against the Capitals and they can't move it to the other one um, left versus right. So if you overload left, they really just didn't have like the personnel to move it on the right side of the ice through like the breakout. Um, but I agree with you about like the depth chart, like, Reamsdyke, Siegenthaler, and Schultz, hand and aside, are all ab- above Faravari, who we'd both like to see get some more play because the handful of games we saw from last year were actually really encouraging. Um, yeah. It also sort of like um, introduces the specter of are the caps done? And we don't know that yet. Um, yeah. So I, I have no idea or compunction one way or the other, but I'm curious about you know, what will happen next. Should yeah. We, At, go ahead. I was going to say, should we move on to the next topic? So you go. Um, I, I guess the other thing about the, the D signings and signing right up to the top of the cap is looking towards next year. Um, and I guess, I guess they're kind of assuming one of their better players that's making uh, pretty big money is going to be selected in the expansion draft. But I don't know how you do Ovi. I don't know how you do Verana. Uh, they need a lot um, more certainty about, yeah, where, unless, about where the cap's going. Unless they think that Ovechkin's going to make less than what he's making now. He's not. And then, and, and I, I don't see that happening at all. Um, or, or, you know, or they make a big trade and they know they need to make one at some point. But I, I, like, I just don't understand. I didn't understand the strategy at all. A, a lot of teams reasons. are in the same boat, though. I mean, like, I, I found more coherence to what the caps were doing than like what Buffalo was doing, or maybe I get what Buffalo is doing. I just thought it was stupid, but like them and yeah, like right. maybe like Winnipeg and the flames did were kind of suspicious. Uh, Detroit 
really weird. Chicago, I get it, but then there's some like dissonance there. Um, yeah, it's a weird time because of all the uncertainty that's happening. Yeah, everywhere, and this is just one more dimension to it. Can we talk about the uh, the Swede in the room? Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's do it. Henrik Lundqvist, one year, one point five million dollars out of free agency. He is seventy seven years old. He last won the Vezina in nineteen thirty seven. He is the oldest goalie known to mankind, and he's going to spend his golden year uh, with the Washington Capitals, I think just for the purposes of avoiding four games against Alex Ovechkin. Um, (laughs) Yeah, we pretty much wrote that one into existence, didn't we? There was a lot of, uh, what is it, the secret, like that, like uh, self-help books, like the positive, like, you know, affirmation (laughs) stuff. Yeah, Yeah, the, the power of positive thought just manifesting hang to the caps out of nothing at all i'm i'm excited about it obviously like it's a consolation prize for losing brayden holpe and that had to happen for a whole bunch of reasons and it's a bummer and we'll talk about that next but um it's it sounds like it'd be a lot of fun yeah i think i think that's one of those where uh i mean i don't want to say you don't really care what the backup's gonna do but you know what you're gonna get you're gonna get a chance to win probably under lundquist uh, he definitely doesn't have what he used to have, but he might be better than how he looked in New York because of your very smart article about how they have such bad defense. So, it, you know, I think that's just going to give the team even more hunger and motivation to try and win. And even after, you know, the Caps did the first couple interviews with him, gosh, is he an impressive person? Oh, yeah, he's great. I mean, oh, my God. Like, handsome, has a charity that's actually like pretty functional uh he is breathlessly uh articulate um he has his own watch he has a signature watch (laughs) yeah i didn't even know that i mean gosh the guy is like i I don't even know he feels like uh like so he's not at the he's not like the greatest player ever like jordan but he kind of has like jordan vibes right as a brand you know yeah i mean if you were to say a little bit if you were to like take like a decade slice from like 06 to 20 to, to like 2016, I think he's up there. Like, yeah, uh, there aren't that many like price had a couple of solid seasons, but Hank had so much consistency where like, if you take in the context of the play he was in, yeah, I think he was by far the best, like maybe like Rene and uh Holpe, maybe even Tim Thomas at the front half of it. But I, th- I think it's Lundqvist in a walk, really, like, since Hashik. Or no, since, I'm sorry, Brodor, too. Like, but really, like, Brodor, uh, Patrick Waugh, uh, Hashik, and uh, Lundqvist. I think that's, like, your top four since, like, 1990. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But I really like the signing. I just, I think, like you said, I think it's fun. I, I think it's kind of candy for the for the Caps fan base in a sense that, you know, losing Holby sucks. I mean, that it, it, it hurts. Like for most people, it hurts pretty bad. And so at least when you bring in a guy that kind of has the same gravitas as, as Holpe, it, it'll kind of help numb, numb that feeling of losing him. And again, I, I remember watching the Colorado Avalanche in, I think it was 2000, 2001 when they, when they had Bork, they, they had got him in the trade deadline the season before. And then in his last season, they won the cup and he finally got to raise it. That was so great. And the t- like it's just like the capitals in 2018 it's just like something takes over the team and it, and the same thing happened to the avalanche that year where they just you know they just they just willed it into existence and um and it felt magical and it, it, and who knows maybe they can have that kind of same cinderella run with with Lundquist next year and 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 kind of remake that moment two decades later i hope so um but i really like the signing and you know because I think our site, since I since I take our site way too seriously, uh, you know, part of me when when Lundqvist got bought out, and I remember I, when we started doing those stories about maybe Lundqvist to DC and Hank to DC, they were ranking really well on Google News, and so you know, part of me is like, <laughs> okay, you know, was was Hank searching his name? It's like, you know, yeah, this getting that Q sense, rating up, you know? all right. <laughs> um, and he, he he definitely fills that like uh, big sort of like hole left. By Holby's departure and also uh, Ilya Kovalchuk, who, like, oh, the Caps yeah. are going to miss How that. How could you forget? They're How really going to miss forget? that presence. Um, all right. So, <laughs> what, can, we, can we talk about Braden Holby? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, 
the Caps didn't offer him uh, a deal, as far as we could tell. I imagine they, like, like I'm sure, like, Holby at some point was like, hey, do you guys want to match this? But once they signed Lundqvist and everything, you know, the writing was on the wall, right? So the market was flooded with free agents. Holby had a down year, and everyone's sort of signing, like, two-year deals in expectation of the Seattle expansion draft and also the uncertainty about when the next season will begin. So there's all these sort of headwinds going towards Brayden Holpe. You know, like the biggest deal we saw was Vancouver's former goalie, Markstrom, uh, uh, you know, signing. Where did he go to? Like the Flames? Where did Markstrom go? Edmonton. Did he go to? No, Edmonton? I don't even Hockey. remember. I don't know. Markstrom. There's too much happening. He is now. It just says Vancouver Canucks. I didn't actually look where he. Yeah, no, it was the Flames. It was the Flames, I think. Okay, it's probably the Sorry. Flames. Sorry, I knew it was Canadian. I know I got it. I got to double check though. Markstrom Flames. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, so, uh, Holpe technically signed a deal that was like smaller than the one that Matt Murray signed in Ottawa. Oh, right? don't get like, me started. On, don't get me started on that one. That oh one doesn't make any. Well, that's one another one of those things. And they also got like Dadenoff today. So whatever. We'll talk about Ottawa eventually, but um, let's let's talk about the deal that Holby didn't sign, which we have no information about, but we have a suspicion about. Do you want to set that one up or do you want me to? Oh, go ahead. So we know that Holby had like other offers and the word on the street is that he turned down a better deal with another team that we don't know, but we know uh, to yeah. sign to go to a city that he and his family wanted to go to, to join a team that he wanted to play for. Um, I think it was the Edmonton Oilers. I think a lot of people had like picked him to be like an Oiler, like to think that he was a good match for Edmonton um, without looking at like old Ted Starkey tweets from 2015 and 2013, where Hope is <laughs> like, I hate the Edmonton Oilers. But like, I, I actually, I really respect him being like, I guess taking into consideration that if he was a free agent last year, he would have made like 70 million more dollars than he, he is on this current contract. <laughs> yeah. But obviously that hurts a little bit, just a little bit. But uh, I like that he chose the team he went to. He signed uh, a, a deal that is fair to him in context of the situation. Also is a little bit of a show me deal. Also is like expansion draft friendly. But yeah. most importantly, sends him and his family to a team they want to play for and a city he wants to be in. I, I think there might be an angle for Seattle there. Um, I do know that the way they constructed the deal with Holpe Vancouver, um, his, the second year he makes like five million, and this year he makes like three, and, and then there's signing bonuses. Um, so that was that was interesting too. Uh, someone remarked to me that like if they didn't if the Capitals didn't sign Justin Schultz, they could have brought Holpe back, and uh, I don't even want to really entertain that, but. Uh, that was a good point too, is that he really signed for less than what I think either you or me could have predicted. I threw out my predictions, but I mean, like, like I said, flooded with free agent goalies, the market yeah. was and two year deals. I mean, aside from like Mark Stroman, pre Trangelo, which we'll talk about in a second and Matt Murray, which doesn't make any damn sense. Yeah. You know, a lot of the deals were, it was a pretty you know, there's still free agent goalies unsigned. There's a bunch of people unsigned still. So uh, it seemed like it was a very tough market for the uh, UFAs. Maybe not so much. for Yeah. Teams. And, and his signing beyond, you know, beyond how much we loved him as a player. I mean, just everything he did off the ice was so valuable and he connected with so many people and he did so many, you know, I don't want to say necessarily the word brave, but I, but I think for an athlete, you know, when you march in the, uh, you know, in the DC Pride Parade, you know, there, there is a certain segment of fans who aren't going to like you. And, you know, I, I really admire how much he kind of lifted up and tried to help other people, uh, especially the most vulnerable. I know his family, I think, raised like money enough for like 50,000 meals for, for people in need in DC uh, during the pandemic. I mean, that kind of stuff, you know, he was one of those guys that, really tried to make the most of his celebrity and and his and and his fame through sports and i'm really going to admire him for that i remember one time he was making fun of me for being an orioles fan uh you know uh, in the locker room one time uh 
back when he was a little bit more, uh, I guess, affable and 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 less serious. And um, you know, it, I, I think guys are going to miss him a bunch, and and I know fans are too. So it was, I, I really wish him the best. I think you're probably going to buy a Canucks jersey, uh, <laughs> uh, and you know, I think a bunch of people here in DC are, and and we're wishing him nothing but the best. Yeah, I, I'm uh, scoping out uh, Vancouver merchandise right now to see what the best fit is. But yeah, I think it'll be my first <laughs> New Jersey. Well, it'll be my first Jersey purchase like ever because my only other one is the Matt Bradley one you gave me from a billion years ago. Oh, yeah. The Adidas have weird sizes. OK, just a, just a warning a for me. An extra large is number 54. So let's uh, let's expand on uh what what's going on with uh, Vancouver? So okay, the Vegas Golden Knights landed probably the biggest prize of free agency, which was Alex Petrangelo on the defense for like a pretty darn big deal for like I think he's like a twenty nine year old uh, defender, which both in like position and dollar sort of made ex Caps defender Nate Schmidt the odd man out. So uh, Vancouver saw it coming and uh, traded a th- a single third round draft pick for Nate Schmidt in his like four or five years left on his deal. Uh, So that's a gosh darn steal, which means that Nate Schmidt, Brayden Holtby and Jay Beagle are all playing for the Vancouver Canucks next season, whenever that happens. That is wild. And we are adopting the Vancouver Canucks as of now. I'm not staying up to do those recaps, though. That's too late for me. (laughs) Something maybe if I move out west or something, I'll 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 change that. But um, yeah, we've got uh, a new team. We're still the the Caps dudes, but we also are the Caps West dudes. Caps West used to be San Jose. They're dead to us. Now yeah, we are. Absolutely. Now we are the uh, Vancouver Canucks blog. And uh, if yeah, bring it on Vancouver. Let's start some beefs with their local media or something. And and bring it on our own Facebook commenters. Ugh, oh, Armin God. B, get over it. This guy didn't do anything when he was in DC. Freaking get over it. They I'm are like unfollowing the site. The the running joke about calling like Andre Burakovsky like our like son or nephew or something just is unacceptable to <laughs> go, like goofballs on on Facebook. I'm sorry, clowns. Um, I I well and, I was. And, 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 and also Armin B editors who care very deeply about Google News and keywords. <laughs> uh, and we have a number of hardcore Vancouver Canuck partisans among the team, like yeah. Danya and Kara yeah. in particular. Uh, and I yeah. don't mean like leave anybody out. I'm sure we have more, but I know that those two are big. I think we're all Vancouver Canuck stands now, though. Yeah, they had a great postseason. Um, I hope no one goes back in the podcast, listens to stuff I was saying about Vancouver about a year <laughs> and then two months ago because I was wrong. Uh, they, yeah, though they're they were a fun team, a good team, could have gone deeper. I don't think Thatcher Demko's got the stuff. We'll see. Um, I they have I, the good Hughes brother. They have the best Hughes brother, <laughs> sure. which makes no sense. The um, the so like Thatcher Demko had like two weeks of really good hockey. And they're like, you know what? Let's let Markstrom walk. And they bring in Holtby. And they're like, all right, let's give Demko. Well, here, here's the other layer on which they're wrong. They're like, we'll do a 50-30 split. 50 games for Thatcher, 30 games for Braden. And that starts with the assumption that there's going to be an 80-game season next year, which is <laughs> banana town. Second is, you have no idea if Thatcher Demko's got the stuff or not. You saw him play for, what, like seven games? And he was great. And he had like some like legendary you know, like a postseason play there. That was awesome. You have no idea what that guy is long term. He could be a, a an 899 goalie or he could be a 925. You don't know anything yet. That's just a little glimpse. So uh, I'm really glad that like, like the first thing Holby did when he when he signed the deal is he's like, hey, can I uh, can I get uh, Thatcher's WhatsApp username or something like so they could chat it up? That's I don't know. It's exciting. It's a it's an interesting time. I'm excited to. Not stay up late to watch Vancouver games at 10 o'clock, but <laughs> to, you know, watch highlights the next morning and, and, and cover them as if there are are scattered babies. You know, what? I'm going to sleep almost the same time as you because my son is breaking me, by the way. <laughs> like this kid, this kid now goes to bed at like 
10 30 p.m which is crazy for a little kid and then he wakes up at like 6 or 7 a.m like like he like we're co-sleeping and so like he'll just start kicking me or asking me for food Be like, it's always hey daddy and i'm like oh god I'm like, just go back to sleep <laughs> go back to sleep and and then i have to entertain him for like three hours in bed and it's just oh my god so like i like i can't even stay up past midnight which is really it used to be hard for me to go to sleep before midnight i'm so just let you know i am regressing in every way so eileen's taking a night class on thursday nights that starts at nine and ends at midnight so we're all like all right we gotta stay up later i've been taking afternoon naps so i can go to bed at the same time as her that's so cute and i totally get that though (laughs) <laughs> but my son, my son, you know what? When people were were like, you know, Igor, who used to do translations for us, I was I when when Ethan was like two and wasn't talking or one, uh, I was like, man, I can't wait to be able to talk to him. And he's like, once they start talking, they never shut up. You know what? <laughs> All the times that he talks to me, I love it. I love it. I just cannot handle. I just cannot handle the random waking up at before the sun is up. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know asking me for like mini muffins in a bag and like talking about Paw Patrol. I mean, I, I, oh, just, I don't know I just, if you've ever hard. said it. I don't think you've said it on, on like the podcast or anything like that yet. Can you tell us what he calls trucks? Oh, trucking deagles. So trucking deagles. Yeah. Yeah. D E E G L E S. I'm going to call them. I call it trucking deagles. Like he also, he also is calling everything with a Y name. So like trash truck is trashy. Oh, he's a hockey and... player. <laughs> yeah. I think he picked that up for me. That's great. I don't know. He's, he's, he's a perfect child. Mine is biting me uh, before his nap today. Not like, good. Not a good sign. Yeah, that was bad. All that right. was kind of, that was kind of jungle boy, but can, all right, go ahead. Can we do, oh, that's too many slashes. Can we do a rundown of free agency? Let's do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So, a bunch of items here that I want to talk about. Not these. Not all of these are like signings. Some of these are like trades and buyouts. Let's start with Carl Olsner got bought out by <laughs> Montreal. I know this is like a weird one, but like it's worth talking about. Like, yeah, Olsner basically has no hands. Like he, he like hasn't <laughs> had fingers that are that can grip things in like five years. Uh, I don't know how many games he ultimately played for for like Montreal after that first season. I doubt it was like 20. Uh, and I guess this buyout, like he was like grateful for it because he's like, great. Now I have another chance to like get signed. There's uh, a ton of like there are RFAs that that didn't get tendered offers that still haven't got signed. Like I I woke up this morning convinced that Anthony Duclair was like, you know, because he didn't get a qualifying offer from Ottawa. Uh, and I was like, why hasn't he been signed yet? He's a totally useful player. Like, I don't know yeah. how Carl Olsner is going to get a spot. Unless he takes like 700 K yeah. to play it in like the Panthers. Like I, I would look at him as either his career's over or he goes overseas. I just, I don't, I don't. You, you know, we talked about it, you know, years ago. But like, like you said, with his hands, like he he just never recovered from. Uh, I think he had like groin surgery too, like sports hernia surgery, the same mm-hmm. thing that kind of killed Brooks Lake's career. And, and Pody too, I think. you know, yeah, and it's sad because he was he was such a great player, and and you know, I I thought. He was kind of he was kind of the new age NHL defenseman before it happened. I thought a little bit like he wasn't as fast as other guys, but but he was really a puck mover and uh, you know good at blocking shots and stuff like that with a stick. But man, I, I what thought a... of him more as an old school guy. I oh really? Him, yeah, yeah, I always I... saw him as like a I mean like a, a more sprightly Langway. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, I kind of saw him as like more of a first pass guy that just deflected shots all the time and. And tried to avoid physical battles. You know what I yeah. mean? Like oh, yeah, I think yeah. of an old That's school guy point. as a guy like like Langway just hugging a guy, yeah, not skating at all, just like morass. restraining penalties, <laughs> yeah. restraining that didn't <laughs> yeah. get called ever. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, so we, yeah, I, that that happened. I don't really know what else to say about that. That's just Carl. Olsen, Carl, I don't know. there's always a spot for you in RMB. Okay, let's talk about that real quick. There are a whole bunch of dudes. Uh, hockey boys that are no longer affiliated with either the Capitals or any professional sports organization. Like, we could just talk to them. There's no... I, okay, just I just pitched that idea on the podcast. All right. Let's, all right. All right. All right. Next next deal, uh, uh, Rako Gudish 
at Florida. I don't remember what his deal was. It was I'm sure it was two years because all the deals three were two years. years. No, it was three really? years. It was three years. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, he's honestly he's getting paid. Uh, who knows what kind of season he'll put up? Because I thought he was really good uh, a year and a half, well, two years ago in Philly. I thought he was pretty bad for Washington overall, like not as yeah. advertised. Whereas Niskanen did really good in Philly. We'll talk about him in a minute. Um, I'm happy that he's going to Florida. Like, but the thing is, as soon as I said it, I was like, he went to a state where most of his, you know, there's no income tax there. And everyone's like, well, 41 of the games that he'll play in are on the road and he actually has to play income tax on those. I'm like, oh, you think there's going to be 41 road games? <laughs> Wait, do you really have to do that? Yeah, God, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's so complicated. Yeah, that you need to have an accountant. That's... I'm sure like the accountant, there's some lobby that makes the taxes really complicated. So you have to hire accountants. It's the accounting lobby. Oh, really? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I I'm making this that. up, but it's probably right. It's probably right. No, yeah. I believe you. I, yeah, I was, I don't know. Um, when he first started with the Capitals and, and skated with Ferrari to start the year, I was like, oh, give me this pairing for the rest of time. Yeah. And then Ferrari went down and Gudis just didn't do well down the stretch like he was okay in the first half i thought really but bad pairing with kempney like him and kempney were trash yeah together. yeah and you can see why too is that you know gudis doesn't really have jets and kempney was it's hurt kind of like multiple ways kind of pseudo yeah kind of pseudo injured not fully recovered so he can't skate at full strength and then yeah it just didn't it just didn't work i thought he was done honestly i thought he's either going to the lease or was done yeah. and i was surprised by that deal like of all the guys to probably get a one year or two year deal, I thought it would be him. Um, but you know, NHL GMs just are crazy about defensemen. Which so maybe Alzner's back next year. You know, <laughs> maybe yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they like they're big boys. I uh, remember yeah. like remember there was like a, a you know twenty four hour story or maybe it was maybe it was only like a two hour story that Schmidt was going to go to Florida instead oh, of Vancouver. Yeah. And I was like, what's what's the thought there? I'm sure that that deal was cooking and the reporter that, that like was given that story is not a joke. Like, I think that that was there was a lead on that and then it got walked back and I think something fell apart um, or somebody yeah. leaked it too soon and that spoiled it. Uh, can we, should we yeah, move on to the next one? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Taylor Hall from Arizona uh, to, into free agency. Arizona got their first round draft picks out of having uh, Taylor Hall's magic, whatever. And uh, he went to Buffalo. Which sort of surprised everybody because I don't think anyone had Buffalo linked to Taylor Hall at any point. Yeah. Uh, no one thought that Buffalo was interested, like the Pagulas were interested in spending that much money. But you can sort of see how it like makes sense. Like he'll skate with Jack Eichel. That'll be really good. They'll have some top level offense. They got they got Skinner, I think, from Minnesota for Marcus Johansson in that trade. Um, they so had like, Stahl. Eric Stahl. Stahl, excuse me. So they have, yeah. that's right, they had Skinner. Um, so they've got like top end forward talent. They just don't have anything else. <laughs> like they don't have goaltending. <laughs> they don't have uh, two and a half pairings of defense. Like they're, they're <laughs> a really weird top heavy team. And I wonder if it's just like a huge expenditure to be like, well, let's get some highlights. Let's get some all-star appearances. I don't get I, it. You know, I, I was thinking about it and I think for Hall, it makes sense because you're going to play with Eichel. You're going to get a ton of minutes. If you're not seeing the contract that you're going to get, even if you're going to a really crappy team, if you make that first line really good and you get Buffalo out of it, yeah. Ugh. My thought is that he's angling to sign with Seattle. Oh, that yeah. is one year deal you know, being he, like a marquee signing. That'd be really cool because Seattle will have the money to give him the long term deal, and they would want to sign uh, long term a um, you know a, a, a former MVP. I mean, that's the easiest signing in the world for Seattle to make. Um, and they need leaders, you know? So, so you look at in the expansion draft, if they take Oshie, if they take Holtby, if they sign Taylor Hall, wow, that is a pretty good team. Uh, and, and like we saw, uh, when the golden Knights came into existence, how many dumb people, you know, NHL GMs left available cough, cough, Brian McClellan and Nate Schmidt. Um, you know, they're probably, you know, Nate Schmidt was the easiest guy to call. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? Like, Hmm, this guy has possession statistics, top 10 of the league. Let's get rid of them. Uh, I, I just so. checked, uh, Namita, the, uh, you know, analytics person for Seattle. Yeah, yeah. She has no tweets about Taylor Hall. So if she had them, oh, she really? deleted them. 
Uh, I but, <laughs> oh, that's, mm. but like if she's run analytics for that team, they're pretty smart. Um, I would be surprised if they overpay. But then said I looked at the cap space for Seattle, and it turns out they have all of it because they don't have. Yeah, any, they, they haven't made, yeah. signed anybody. No, I mean that's if you're gonna overpay for a guy, I mean that's do the it guy in year you're one, right? After yeah, yeah, exactly. You need star power. Speaking of star power, Travis Boyd to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I thought it'd be Gudis. To the Maple Leafs, instead it was Travis Boyd. Couldn't have predicted that one. So like I, I, I like tweeted at Steve Dangle. I was like, Steve, he's a nice guy. <laughs> he's got a family. Sometimes he plays hockey. He's important to me. He's precious to my heart. Be nice to him. <laughs> and he's like, okay. Like, is he is he gonna play? I was like, yeah. When someone gets hurt, he's gonna play. Not and he put up a lot of points. Surprisingly, it's always surprising. He's got like, that wow, beagle offense. He's got that like. Yeah, he- Shoot when you're going to score and not any other times <laughs> offense. <laughs> yeah, like um, I was actually surprised that he got a league minimum deal. I, I don't know. Again, again, you thought he could I, get more? I thought I thought he was deserving of at least a million. Um, judging it's, by his like points, points per minute are ridiculous for him. He, for a fourth and, like, liner. and knowing that he got minimum, it makes it weird Like the Caps didn't. I guess the Caps would have had to tender a QO over league minimum right like i guess they could have signed him in well, free agency for the same but well what they could have done is they non-tendered him but then like they did with dsp which which i know you hated um they they could have offered him a, a new uh contract before he went to free agency so i yeah i think he definitely took a pay cut and he's played nhl games he has pretty good stats per minute um you know, just I just, games, I, just so. I just don't think he worked. I just don't think he worked in Washington. I think they wanted him to go. You, you know, I, I think they wanted him to get a better opportunity. But it just again, it just I don't get, I don't get that one at all. But you know, you know what it is. He's there's the, a, he's the Chandler Stevenson of 2021. Yeah, yeah. Watch he's, him score like 15 goals next year, and all of us be like, oh. Yeah, no. He like he, all of a sudden he's gonna be like taking shifts with Austin Matthews, and you're like, <laughs> oh well, there it is. All right. Uh, uh, that's literally. Watch that happen, dude. Watch that happen. Uh, if there is a season, uh, that's literally all you can talk <laughs> about, Travis Boyd. So let's move on to sure. um, Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson, like, oh, that was fun. What a great story. So like, Rutherford <laughs> is like, actually, Schultz sucked. Johnson was great. Schultz was definitely dragging that pairing. Then, uh, and then like he was like, uh, they hired. Um, oh no, the he- head coach. Jesus. Um, Sullivan? Yeah. Uh, was like, Mike Sullivan. Yeah. Was like, oh, yeah, no, no. no uh, uh, Jack Johnson's great. We love Jack Johnson. They hired Reardon. Reardon's like, oh, yeah, he's a solid third pairing defender. Everyone <laughs> everyone loves the guy. And then three days later, they're like, buy out. See you later, pal. And you're like, ha ha, that's, that's <laughs> ironical. Uh, great move. <laughs> great move by like Reardon to like dodge that bullet. But then the Rangers, for God knows what reason, signed him <laughs> because they're like, you know what we need to do? We need to make our defense worse. <laughs> just inconceivable. Like if you're like Georgie ever, like there, you know, uh, I can't the other the other defender, the other goalie up there has like a name starting with an S, but I can't remember right now. They are they must be grumpy. Uh, the Rangers don't make any sense to me, by the way. I I don't know what the they're gonna continue I don't even to be know why. abysmal defensively. You know, I couldn't imagine Brian McClellan pulling off that long con like Rutherford did. Rutherford is dirty, man. I mean, just straight up lying. Uh, that was, you know, I, I had when we, so I wrote the post that had the timeline, but Peter supplied me all the quotes. I need to make sure I give credit here. I was a broadly aware of Rutherford defending him, but I didn't realize how deep it went. It is hilarious when you go through, (laughs) like it was consistent. Like, like there was like five different uh, interviews Rutherford did after the season. And he says the same thing about Jack Johnson the whole time. So I guess like that's him trying to protect his job and being insecure about his job security. Oh, but that was just so funny. Just let's, be honest about it. Let's go to, let's go to the, the, the story here. So oh, here we go. Uh, so this happened on October five, but let's work backwards in time. Right. So uh, August 11th defense could have been better. Johnson was great, but uh, Schultz had a lot more to give. Then what? Ten days later, uh, yeah. Johnson's problem is not a uh, Johnson's contract, not a problem for us. Um, <laughs> Whoops. Uh, and then Rutherford's again, like he's a third pairing D. Everything's good. He blocks shots. He does everything great. He gets unfair, cri- unfairly criticized. He's a good player. And then 
Elliot Friedman Leaks was like to Friedman. Leak, like, leak to Friedman probably. They're not. They don't want to trade him. <laughs> they they like him a lot. He's not going anywhere. I don't think it's a contract you can move right now anyway. Well, and then and then they hire uh, Reardon. And Reardon's like, yeah, decent year. He could be a third pair. Third pairing defenseman is like. Uh, <laughs> Uh, damning by faint praise and they're like just kidding so that was september 2 one month later they're like see you pal and uh, you know they'll eat their his salary for however long they need to do it just and then, and then they get matheson who is awful yes yeah, right they got madison like, to take his for place like seven years for like seven years good stuff i don't know i'm just guessing it's, that contract is horrible oh man the penguins are kind of yeah well i mean they're just i mean yeah they're they're i think they're probably like way weaker in depth than the caps are but as yeah. long as they've got, you know, Malkin and uh, and Crosby, who knows? Yeah. I, Malkin uh, is so good, by the way. He, he does not get the credit that he deserves. Well, he's he's had some off seasons. He's been hurt. So um, but I remember what, like 2010. Everyone's like, oh, they got to get rid of Malkin. I'm like, cool. They won two cups and he was bomb ass in, do- in both of those cup runs. Um, speaking of the, the Penguins and bad contracts, Matt Murray. Uh, was I guess like they signed his like free agency? Uh, I'm sorry, like his RFA rights, his negotiation rights yeah. to they the Senators. Uh, he's six point two five million dollars average over four years to the Ottawa Senators. I guess it's just to get to the salary floor, but then they signed <laughs> Evgeny Dadanov. So I don't know what the hell's going on. Just one of the most mystifying deals. Like Matt Murray uh, had almost nothing to do with the 2017 Cup win. Like that was that was in spite of him. Uh, 2016, that team was amazingly dominant. Like the like the 2016 Penguins yeah. were probably like the best team in the NHL that year, and they deserved to win that cup. Uh, I don't know. I'm just baffled. Uh, I don't understand. I don't, it. It's gonna be a disaster for for senator for the Senators. Yeah, like w- why do you not tender, declare, trade for Matt Murray, and then like there's nothing. There's nothing that that says that he deserves anything more than like three to four million tops and yeah. they're giving him six it's just like you could literally it's, it's cut kinda, the term and dollars in half and say that's a modest overpay i i i hate to look at players like commodities i know you do too and but you can kind of make make kind of like a weird metaphor between players and real estate in a sense where guys have certain numbers and they're worth a certain amount and I, I like that's where I'm just like confused yeah. is that if they're trying to save money or if they're trying to get better. But not pay a ton that that signing makes no sense. You know what I mean? I know, like, yeah. like it, it doesn't have anything to do with reality. It's just I don't know. I can't explain it. I, like there there was 60 goalies that were available and you pick a guy that might be broken. You, you know what I mean? And you pick a guy you pay him six. Probably were three. It it just boggles the mind when there's so many good goalies available, on and that's the, been a problem for them. Yeah, on the eve of um of free agency, I was convinced that the Senators were broke. I was like, oh, the reason they didn't do any qualifying offers is because they're like, we're gonna we're gonna ask for like an exception, an exemption from the salary cap floor because we don't think that you know hockey's gonna happen, and also we're broke because we haven't had any revenue for six months, right? Like that was my guess. And that didn't happen because they spent two. Well, this deal and the Dadnoff deal are both like big dollar deals. One of them is pretty good. One of them is pretty trash. Uh, I don't get it. I, I think there's uh, there's shoes yet to drop about uh, yeah. Ottawa. And like Melnick came out with their like, um, you know, safety plan for like a 25 percent occupancy in the new season. And if there's one Did person you see I, his quote, no. <laughs> He said, "He said us being forty percent full with six thousand fans. Oh, we'll definitely sell out with that." <laughs> just, so he dis, like, this good. Is a, this is the fans. This is the fans of the media. I love it. I love. It. Uh, if there's one person I would trust with my health, it would definitely be Eugene Melnick. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> another. Well, what do you make of this one, Tyler Lewington to the Predators? I, you know what? The Caps needed righties. I have no idea why they didn't just resign him instead of go with. So I, I mean, it might it must be uh, Ledoux, Ledoux, yeah. Ledoux. Uh, they they must think that him and Van Riemsdyk fit better with uh, what Lavalette's going to do than what Lewington would do. He's kind of a plotter, skater, uh, a plotting skater. Um, 
But yeah, you know, he was, you know, I thought he was terrible. And in his time in the NHL, he was really serviceable. I thought he did great. Like, it's like a, you're like, I mean, he was probably eighth in the depth chart behind Faravari. Yeah, I'd say eighth. Yeah. yeah, I'd say eighth. And he did great. I thought. I I didn't understand them not signing him because I thought he exceeded all expectations and you know I went from oh why are you why are you calling him up to they should you know like this this guy could kind of he just kind of had this presence where where he was really solid he was just a solid defenseman so I didn't understand that one at all I, like again to the letting him go part right yeah the letting him go part I just you know great like Hershey fans loved him Hershey loved him. That just seemed like a good marriage to keep going. But I, I haven't looked at like the the Predators blue line lately, but I I wonder if he's like in the top six of it. I don't I don't I doubt it. Like I, I doubt thought, it I too. The, I I remember the Predators having a really good D, but I don't know who they've kept. I think, and they didn't make the playoffs, I, right? Did yeah, I think playoffs? it was a. I think the, I think they tweeted the minor league team with like with the announcement. So I did not know that. that I think sense, so. Yeah, so I think he's definitely going to be in the. In the A, if the A even happens the next year, which is another fun conversation to have. But um, yeah, my my last item for free agency is uh, um, the sort of surprise. Like everyone thought that the Vegas Golden Knights were going to trade Mark Andre Fleury, possibly back to Pittsburgh. But then we they they resigned him, and then like 15 minutes later, we learned that Robin Lehner had like a shoulder surgery, which means that yeah. the, the guy who tweeted the image of him, or you know. Getting <laughs> getting impaled by a sword with the coach's name on it is sticking with the team, and they're gonna pretend like that goalie tandem is sustainable, which it hella is not. There's no way that like let's say the season starts in February, like a maniac, and they run with that that goalie tandem. There's no way if they're both healthy that 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 runs for a full season. They're gonna they're gonna move one of those dudes, and it's gonna be math. It's gonna be who was who was their agent? It was their favorite agent. Walsh? I think he blocked. Yeah, Walsh. Did he block us or you or something one time? Yeah, on no, I'm, I'm blocked by that dude. <laughs> I I don't know why. I never even tweeted at the dude. They just that, there must be a list somewhere of, of <laughs> trolls. Um, you got us blocked by Mike Green. That was the that was the funniest thing when I was giving the Easton Stells. Wait, I got us blocked by Mike Green. Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, you made that. There, there was a video game joke you made uh, during the playoffs, and I think he saw it. We got blocked after that. And I asked, I ended up having like connections with some of the players and I asked, and it wasn't green who blocked us. It was one of his friends. I forget his name. And then, and then I remember I directly asked Mike and the locker room was like, Hey, so why did you block us? He was like, I didn't block you. What are you talking about? Sorry, Mike Green. I, I like your hand tattoos. Have fun, have fun, have fun. <laughs> so have let's fun talk. So that was actually our next agenda item. Uh, oh, Mike, sorry. Mike Green, Justin. Well, this is good segues. You're you're setting me sure. up. Justin Williams, Mike Green, and, and Matt Niskanen, three ex cap boys, all announced their retirements really since like the cessation of play. Um, Mike Green was probably the first one to announce it. He had a long career. Justin Williams for sure did multiple Stanley Cups. I thought if Carolina didn't get so banged up by injury, um, especially like uh, the um, Sveshnikov injury. I thought they could have had a much deeper run. They could have given Justin Williams the Ray Borg yeah. special like we were talking about early. Or, and Matt Niskanen, something's going on there, and I don't know what it is. He had a damn good season with the Flyers last season. Uh, and they, So let's go to Niski first. I, that I vividly recall. Uh, so the reporting there was that he was miserable in the bubble uh, away from his family. He has two kids, and he was just done. Like he, Like, he knew that... Whatever the NHL does next season, there's probably going to be some kind of bubble or, you know, I know the NHL says that they're not going to have a bubble, but maybe even a hybrid bubble or something like that. And he didn't want to be away from his, his kids for that long anymore. Compare, so compare like it up. bubble leagues to non-bubble leagues and it's not a contest. I mean, yeah. he, baseball has been OK for the last couple months, but the NFL is a disaster. College football is a disaster. Yeah. But so that was that for him, it was family. Um I think Justin Williams, obviously, he it's old he, as dirt. You know, last year, yeah, he was. Th- I think he's thirty nine now. That's and, disgusting uh, age. That's just. He, <laughs> I'm not thirty nine. We're yet. almost <laughs> almost thirty six. I can't believe that. Um, but yeah, he he ended up retiring. He played a half season last year and then resigned right before the pandemic started. And uh, I have no idea if he was know. good or not. So don't ask me. I have no. No, idea. he was good. He was good. 
I, that guy just puts up points. Like, you, I don't know where it comes from. You know what I mean? He's you don't really, look at he's him a and really go, smart player. And like, yeah. he's also like, he's still fought on the boards, you know, in, in yeah. 2017 with the Caps. Like, he plays the game the right way. And, and he somehow turns it into goals and points, too. I mean, he has to be. I remember when I first saw him in the locker room, his thighs were like, he had like Matt Hendricks thighs, Matt, like just gigantic. Like, you're like, oh, well, that explains everything. It's just the guy was super strong. And he just dumps body. like a truck, truck, truck. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Thank you. Uh, so that was actually so, Cisco um, who said that. <laughs> I, now, on Mike Green, I think he said it was uh, more about family. But, um, are, are, but yeah, are he that, and Courtney and Banana and Gary moving back to D.C. ever? So they the D.C. home that they they bought that was a fixer upper and was it Paloma 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 I don't know if it's in Nova, I just it's all one undifferentiated mass of, of near it's near scum. ish the White House it's one of those rich neighborhoods um he um he ended up selling it during the season uh originally the Greens said that they were going to move back into it uh and retire in DC and uh it looks like that's not happening so uh, I'm not sure what his next step is but I'm sure at some point he'll be back you know you know what i mean um but yeah he you know even when you look at who he did his retirement story with he did it with uh tark el bashir of the athletic yeah. who we love uh so you know I, he has strong dc ties at some point i think he'll be back in some some way or the other maybe more in a dennis marook way than a rod langway way where oh. langway langway just lives in the arena he's always around can't get rid of uh, him <laughs> but uh yeah. Uh, those dudes at like the cig- I hope that like I don't drink much, but the cigar and whiskey party, I want to get down with Mike Green and Knubel and Maruk and and Langway. <laughs> those are those are fun days. And Pat Sajak, right? Wasn't he there? He was the there year one year. Yeah, I've been I've been to a few now. I, I it's like my favorite event. But uh, I I was so starstruck when I met his son at Laughlin's <laughs> Foundation thing. You're starstruck like, by this Pat Sajak. Sound so weird. <laughs> Hold on, I, was like, I, was like, I was like, I just want to, I just want to interview your dad once. I mean, that will be a career highlight. Cause I remember playing on the wheel of fortune on my, on my NES when I was like 11 or 10. And I don't know why it's just, it just <laughs> Pat Sajak's son is named Patrick. Did you know that? I'll just change and... it to Patrick Sajak. Are you watching, <laughs> are you watching uh, jeopardy this season? Uh, has it aired yet? Have they yeah. done any new episodes yet? Yeah, they're like, yet? I don't know, like four weeks in, three weeks in or something like that. It's pretty much oh, like the only appointment viewing that me and Eileen have. Uh, how's, how's it been? Good. They're, they're distanced, socially distanced. And, uh, oh, really? they're cool. not clearing the board a lot, which is a big frustration point for Eileen. Like if there's clues left on the board and they run out of time, Eileen's furious. She's like, these clowns need to get their act together. They need to buzz in quickly. They're just taking way too much time. Uh, yeah, so there's that. I like her. I like her quiet intensity. That I mean, that's awesome. We we take Jeopardy uh, weirdly seriously. Um, all right, so let's let's move you, on from. You know, what we, me and Ashley take uh, very seriously Outlander. We can talk more about Outlander. Eileen is a big right. Outlander fan. Um, oh my god, that show is amazing. It really is good. Like, uh, talk a- it's got a body count. Also having a body count will be uh, the Tampa Bay uh, super spreader event. Uh, <laughs> wild stuff. Not fun. Peter made a bad tweet. We're not going to talk about the bad tweet. Um, <laughs> but Tampa had like their like. Wild ass celebration. Uh, Connor McDavid confirmed case of coronavirus. Uh, and we learned after uh, after the cut was over that like half of the Bruins were decapitated. And most of the stars were impaled, like like Tyler Sagan, uh, uh, Charlie McAvoy. Um, these are different teams, I know. Um, uh, Patrice Bergeron, Brad Marchand all had like surgeries. Like those teams were wrecked. I can't believe that the stars like stayed competitive. Like, yeah, they I mean, obviously, like they were it was a relatively close final. as far as I'm concerned, like between uh the bolts and the and the, and the stars like clo- are like closer than we're used to with cup finals recently um but knowing that they were that banged up i wondered if like you know if you were to run that series again if they could win it and i i wouldn't be surprised if they could if they were two healthy teams i guess though one healthy team was without stamkos you know like the bolts missed 
one of the best scorers of the last decade. So uh, I guess yeah. I would still get the edge of the Bolts there. I think I think one thing that's starting to change is that I know for the longest time fans would hang their hats on the fact that ha ha my sport is tougher than yours. You know, if somebody breaks a finger in the oh, NBA, they still yeah. do. Uh, but I hate um, that crap. But but I, I'm starting to hate it too. And and one of the things I'm starting to get worried about is that. You know, as you get to know players better, you just start worrying about what are they doing to play when they have a fractured foot or a broken foot? You know what I mean? Um, and is that safe? What are the long-term ramifications? Why isn't that more of a discussion than, you know, we got 13 guys injured, you know, one was playing with a broken hip, and, you know, there should be more questions. I mean, I you know, that's the one of the things that I hate about uh, just sports in general and PR is that it's really, really hard to get to that crucial question and, and really have an understanding. Like, like for instance, like Greg Winshinsky's, uh bubble story about how the players felt about the bubble. The where it was monster like, story. Emily Kaplan. Yeah, I know, yeah Emily, I'm sorry for forgetting, uh, forgetting her role in that. Um, and she was there. Uh, she, wasn't she there? I, I don't know. But okay. it doesn't matter. But But the thing was is that um, there, there. You just, you just don't understand unless someone talks and and really tries to articulate it and comes to you and and is willing to talk to you and really open up. And and when you have like six to ten people who who are willing to really share, uh, that's when you can actually really make a story which is impactful. And it kind of shows like how bad the bubble was. You know, everybody after the Capitals lost, you know. We're like, this is Reardon's fault. This is Reardon's fault. This is Reardon's fault. And while I will never deny that Reardon ultimately was the guy to blame for that team losing, you, you know, it's such a small sample size. It's such a weird situation. You don't know how guys are reacting emotionally to that bubble. People discount that. But, you know, there's probably a lot of guys that are really struggling. Uh, you know, just reading about how, like, uh, dudes – um, you know, felt like they couldn't get outside for like five to seven days. I mean, that's depressing. Yeah, so that then sucks. it's the same, it's the same thing with the injuries is that until someone can shine a light on it, you know, and people are willing to talk and get past this, this is what you're supposed to do. If you have a broken foot, you're supposed to play through the pain. Um, it's never going to change. And I hope that that, that moment happens in the NHL because it's just starting to become concerning for me. You know, like, again, these guys aren't commodities. They are human beings, you know? Yeah, you were talking about this when we were on, like, the free agency topic earlier. But I'm always reminded, like, of there's, like, in, in like, technology and really, I guess, like, any, like, company where, like, you have, like, staffing concerns. There's this, like, tendency for people to be like, uh, all right, how many bodies do we need to put on this project? Or, like, we need some boots on the ground. I'm like, no, we need the people that fill those boots. Those are humans. Like, if we're going to be asking people to work, like, 60 hours a week, that's uh, criminal. Or should be at least right. Like uh, I, I, yeah. yeah. Remembering that there's a human being behind these things is always a good idea, uh, especially when like awful things happen. You know, you have like um, Derek Bugard and uh, I don't know. Back in like in like wrestling as well, there's a, a ton of like awful like, CTE stories that are t- probably too dark to talk about here. But yeah, um, it's like it's, it's it's just like if you think about how hard it is for like even us or most people to get like a one-on-one interview with a player. You know, it, it's just that's kind of just the way it is, is that there's just this pressure that's always there where guys can't talk about it. And it kind of keeps the status quo going. And, you know, so I was actually like, when I saw the star stuff, I initially was like, wow, that's so heroic. And then, you know, I saw some of the social media reaction on Twitter and I was like, wow, that's really thoughtful. Yeah. This is something that really needs to be investigated. Like why, you know, was it safe? What are the long-term ramifications, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's one thing I'd, I'd, I'd like to see changed in the future. Um, yeah, you know, we know the guys want to win a Stanley Cup, but, you know, we also want you to be able to play with your kids when you're 45. So so um, this all sort of ties together, right? So we have, there's like sort of like the psychological like deprivation of being in the bubble, right? Where there's just, yeah, there wasn't nearly as much fly fishing as advertised. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we're sort of like entering like an unknown space as regard like regarding like next season, right? So uh you ran you you know, looked at like the uh Bill Foley story and him yeah. sort of like talking about what we could see for next season. Um 
where maybe partially in a bubble, maybe all of the Canadian teams, because they won't have to travel between the border or not, are going to be in, in division. I think we heard like something about like having like what like five, six like hub cities like the past. They're those yeah. Are, mm-hmm. I mean, o- only what twenty four teams were in the bubble. There are going to be are there twenty four teams? So yeah, it was more than the sixteen. Yeah. Maybe it was twenty or something like that. But like, there's going to be pushback from the players' association, uh, no matter what, right? Like they're either going to be at risk because they're traveling, or they're going to be deprived because they're going to be in in bubbles and not be able to see their family. Uh, those are going to be tense conversations. Um, yeah. And I'll, we'll start with this. Hey, when we were told December 1 is when the season is going to start a couple months ago, that was just sort of like soft, right? No one was really committed yeah. to that. Then we were told, I guess maybe this is right before free agency, maybe. The NHL, it was the, oh, it was the, the draft. The draft. 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 The draft. We were told the draft. No, no, uh, it'll be January 1. And then Foley's like, yeah, no one's buying January 1. Right now we're booking on yeah. February 1, which is why all these guys are getting their surgeries, right? Because then they've got at least four months to recover, right? Yeah, exactly. So season starts in February. You've got two months until when like the playoffs are typically supposed to start. Whatever next season looks like, if there is one at all, is going to look very unfamiliar to us, right? The idea of even getting 40 games, 70 games, probably seems ridiculous right like they like the 2013 lockout season where they got what 48 games that's they're not yeah. going to get that many right uh i don't know i don't I, that i don't know i like there are a ton of things that are screwing the nhl um the biggest thing that that to me doesn't seem like a huge deal but to them is is that the olympics uh, the olympics start in july they're not going past july period uh because the rights holder is nbc Right. And NBC doesn't want them to go past that date. And how would you show the NHL, you know, during that time? And I, we know I feel that like when the hockey's up against any other sport, they get their lunch eaten, which is what happens. Even worse. Yeah. Even worse than this year. Yeah. Um, so but like to me, it's like, well, why don't you in the regular season by the Olympics and then start the season, start the playoffs after the Olympic. But anyways, I like that. Like um, a midseason I, break for the Olympics. Yeah. And, yeah. Although I mean, why not? Yeah, maybe. But I, I think what's going to happen here is that they're running up against the their next, which you're aware of, the their their next TV contract, which is next year, which sucks. So this is the lowest, in, in a weird way, this is like kind of the worst the NHL could come into a next deal. Um, and I don't so want Gary Bettman to be at the helm for these negotiations. By the way, like I like well, everyone thought he was going to get out at the last CBA to be like, all right, I got the expansion to Vegas, I'm out, or I got the expansion to Seattle, I'm out. Now they got to have him deal with a CBA that was just signed and then is going to or like extended and may get blown up, at, especially if the teams come back for more money or like a different yeah. like ex- escrow, you know, cost certainty situation, which they're or revenue certainty situation, which they're in terra incognita here like no one knows what the hell's going on or what what you know the 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 finances of the league will look like in a few months except to know that yeah. teams are hurting because they've had no like the dallas stars were in the cup final and just had to furlough a buttload of people for the second time in the calendar year yeah so you look you don't know they're going to feel pressure to play because of that tv contract period yeah they have pressure to end the season before july which makes it even more impossible. Um, three, the NHL depends more on gates than any other sport pretty much out there. And so they need fans. So you have three things there that are just tough pressures that you're going to have to do this season somehow with fans. Um, one of the things that Foley, uh, Foley talked about was how it's really going to depend on if we can actually test 50% of an arena the day of a game that's that listen i like 40 or 50 percent guys i don't i don't i don't work in infectious <laughs> diseases i just work in the industry parallel to infectious diseases and have 10 years of experience in safety frameworks and that's nuts it's not gonna yeah it's a terrible idea it's so like the last I, thing you want is like if like what uh the capacity at uh capital one arena is what like eighteen thousand. So you put 9,000 people on there plus staff. You have the sound system up to a billion people. Like you have the turn it up, the loud, you know, like how much noise can you make thing, right? All you're doing there is putting sputum 
into the air. You're just aerosolizing whatever infection somebody has uh, yeah. in, in a room. That's a gigantic room, but it's still an enclosed place where people are spitting on each other. The, the upper bowl is just dropping aerosol, aerosolized virus on your ass. No, that's a terrible idea. It's it's a terrible idea. But that's what Foley was talking about is that they, you know, and, and that's what uh, Batman has talked about, uh, you know, for months is that next season has to be as normal, has to have fans. Foley was saying 40 to 50 percent. Uh, that's what uh, Melnick was saying. So there's clearly an expectation where there's going to be some kind of viable solution to them where they're going to be able to have fans in the arena uh you know 40 50 percent capacity so that they can make up some of that gate and perhaps because it's such going to be such a hot ticket they would be able to make up some of that money and and charge more oh so yeah, like to, to like up the ticket price because there's only because of scarcity yeah but man you're right as it's going to be i don't i don't know how they're going to get past that unless they do with what the nfl does where the NFL has different rules for different teams about who can be there and who can't. So you might have one team that has 10% capacity. Another team has none. Based other on teams like have 40%. That region's infection rates and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But then you look at like what's going to happen in the fall and winter. Um, you know, we don't know when a vaccine is going to be available, but it's definitely going to be well until next year. Um, you know, go, going by the CDC. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm like you when I think about it, if it's going to cost more to have a season with no fans, they're not going to have a season next year. You know what I mean? Like if they yeah. can't make that money back somehow, there's no point. And that and, would be a lockout. That would be a 2005 lockout. Like th like this, mm -hmm. this is different than a work stoppage or uh, any, any kind of like or strike. This would be a, a, an owner driven lockout because they're saying the, the finances don't make sense. We need to renegotiate your contracts with the uh, the, the CBA with the players or just so, say we need to pause this entire operation until it makes sense again, in which case. Exactly. I think we should need what to prorate Ovechkin some goals. Just give him 80 more goals. Just just put it on the stat sheet. I don't know. I, I'm with you. Uh, but then you think about the A, the AHL. There's like I don't yeah. see how I don't see how they can have a season. They they literally need the gates. Yeah. Like like they can't operate without the gates. So. So I, you know, I, I just don't see how it's gonna work. It's such a weird unless time. Unless you do like, I know. With, unless with you do ESPN like ESPN rights, like, like ESPN, NBC streaming blackouts, like all of these are like. There's a ton of dollars that are left on the table right now with the way the NHL is 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 broadcast and distributed, at least in in the United States. And it's just gonna get messier. And like, this is the worst possible time for this junk to happen for them. Yeah. Obviously, there's two hundred thousand people who are dead, so it's worse for them. But like. Yeah, it's a really it's a disaster. Um, and then we t we've talked about how we think both like the economy is going to be, you know, regardless of who's in power, like the economy is probably going to be even harder hit next year as things catch up. You know what I mean? If people prepared had like, you know, emergency preparations for this year, they're going to be out next year. You know, so it are people going to be able to afford that that expensive ticket? You know can what I, I mean? Can Peter it, afford a Holby so jersey? Who, it's not yeah. a good investment for me right now. I need to have some money saved away, but I also yeah. need a Holby Vancouver jersey. Um, These are the things that people don't talk about, though, and it's, they're all they're all going to be head headwinds going into this. And can I, can I, I agree with you. Can I Go uh, ahead. rant real quick? Um, so yeah. the bubble, as far as like a safety exercise, was an unmitigated success, unqualified success. It was no one got hurt. It was like no one got sick as far as we could tell. Like it was great. And Every time that brush machine would run, like the press release saying zero infections six weeks in, somebody would go, hey, Peter, did you see this? And like, <laughs> Peter, your predictions were wrong. I was like, what are you talking about my predictions? And they said, you said that return to play would be a disaster. I was like, buddy, read that article, because that was about the return to play phase two, where like what the entirety of the St. Louis Blues, the Pittsburgh <laughs> Penguins, the, uh, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs, lightning, the lightning, lightning. lightning. Like, like there were major like breakouts in different teams. And then after that, they all went to a bubble and everything was fine. And I was happy about that. I was rooting for their success. I just yeah. was worried about it. So um, even the bubble system was a little, uh, if you, you know, it was, I think part of it was just that they were in Canada. 
Yeah, Canada sucks. The and uh, no, I, no. The, the, the piped in audience noise was trash. I hated it. Yeah, we can we can agree on that. Ice. It was ice skating. Like I, mean, I talked about this a bunch of times, but like ice, like hockey sounds awesome. I love being at like Kettler, well, not Kettler, MedStar, Capitals, whatever. To, to just hearing it is so much fun. It's like yeah. the, just the sound of like carving on the ice, the sound of like quiet, 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 and then somebody banging a puck off of the uh, of of the pipe. Like that's I, I haven't obviously I've not seen like our friend Drew, or sorry, you call him Andrew, play in a long yeah. time. But uh, I love going to the the uh, Iceplex in Frederick, uh, Frederick Skate Skate Frederick, and hearing you know the the rec teams the beer league teams play i miss it it's a i don't know it's a very pleasurable asmr situation for me and, we... and i also and i also love when the guys were yelling at each other and it would just be like, yes where it was like delayed and garbled that was that was, that was kind of kind of <laughs> out there um <laughs> let's move from the bummer to um you know what i don't even want Ooh. this to be the bottom third i'm just gonna we'll just call it what it actually is i don't want to be the person calling it shell uh nhl 21 i don't I, the last nhl game i played sincerely was 94 so it's which, been a, hey hey they're bringing it back for do, the people who pre-ordered the game so which includes you right you got your copy yes 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 uh how, i'm i when does it come out the 21st it comes out to i believe today i got it like yesterday i think yeah right, so, so um you, i'm chomping ready? at the bit i'm chomping at the bit to play and uh yeah we'll see we'll see what we do with it i'm excited about that all right so you you clearly don't want to you don't want to talk too much about that that's fine no no i'll talk, no, I'll talk about it we, we we're starting a twitch channel and uh uh we're we're you know hopefully beyond me playing nhl 21 and sports games uh peter will jump on there and do his thing to do what though i don't know what i would do what what, what games do you play uh i don't really i i really only play like i feel like people would find you way more interesting than me i play overwatch where i am a low diamond high platinum support player i play valorant where i am uh trash and i get yelled at by 13 year olds for uh, (laughs) yeah i just don't understand tactical shooters i used to be good at counter-strike back in the day um and then i play like single player games like i loved uh the um the Doom Eternal that came out from my friends down the road at Bethesda uh, last or earlier this year. That was great. But uh, that's about it. Oh, oh, and there's like a bunch of like smaller games like Among Us, uh, which we should we should play with like the, the crashers. Like yeah. our, our patron supporters would be a lot of fun. It's like a five dollar game on Steam. So uh, you can get it on your phone. You can get it on your on Macs and stuff. But it's uh, it's like a have you ever played? It's, it's like a ridiculous game. But have you ever heard of a, like a table like a, a party game called uh, Secret Hitler? No, um, it's it's one of these games where like one person's like a saboteur and you need to detect who it is. But you're on a spaceship. Oh. It's, called, it's called Among Us. It's great. There's a game called Fall Guys, which is um, I've seen you play that. That looked really fun. Too stupid for words. And it's it, I, I played it like five times and I never could get past the second challenge. And I just hated myself. Yeah, after playing it. I uh, I'm looking forward to try. You know, I, I shouldn't try to be entertaining. I should just be myself. But uh, that is entertaining. Get... You're a, an amiable <laughs> dude. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to doing that and growing with it and 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 bringing a community there, see how it works and and uh, just make it a part of my life. I think now that things with free agency have died down and we're looking towards four months of nothing, it might actually be a really great timing uh, and another way for us to uh, to communicate and hang out with you guys. So um yeah, we'll be we'll have more details about that probably in the next day or two, um, hopefully. And uh, I, I look forward to sharing that space with you. I hope Peter jumps on. I hope maybe I can figure out a way to get some interview guests and play stuff together with some people you might like. I, like one of the things that I would love to do, um, Ryan Ellis is is uh, has become one of my best friends. Uh, he's the guy who's driven the R&B NASCAR uh, uh, in Xfinity uh, and has has done uh, uh, Monster Cup races and just. Just hearing, you know, anyone who has any kind of interest in racing, uh, he is just such a dearth of knowledge and and is just so entertaining. And we have no, a lot wait, of fun stories about that time about you used it did. wrong. <laughs> All right, but uh, <laughs> my education from UBC is is failing me. No, but uh, design education is fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, I did take a lot of a lot of like broader classes though. 
like the theory of water or whatever that was called the theory of water or, or whatever it was the science of water i don't um, um uh if I anyone has see it advice it. It about like streaming and stuff please do hit us up i want to show you actually just stand by i did do i got uh, i did an impulse buy this doesn't make any sense but uh, okay okay i got a green screen right <laughs> so like i still don't know what to do with this but i have it i know how to use it i'm not good at it but i'm not going to do anything with it now but just to let people know this exists i don't know why i have it uh you know what you should you should do uh a screen where basically you're making your own you know how like you make your headline images where there's like 30 heads you could have like a tripped out like 30 head peter thing oh I like, where it's I, like a kaleidoscope i was thinking about you just know? getting your like taking like a screenshot of your background and making it look like i've duplicated everything <laughs> that you got behind me like dangles right here and enrique's up here and alan's over here all righty uh, yeah, I love how I built this. Yeah, that's that was, that was an 80 minute podcast. I think we're in good shape here, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I, so much has happened and nothing's going to happen for the next. Yeah. Settle four in. months. Oh, God. So uh, we're going to I'm going to struggle to bring you content, but I'm going to try <laughs> and uh, just know that I'm dying inside just like you are for hockey. So uh, enjoy politics, everybody. Oh, yeah, that too. We're not yeah. talking about it. Thank you, Ian. Thank Bye, you, Peter. watchers. Bye. Cheers, Bye-bye.